In this video, I am going to talk about the widely supported approach to course design referred to as backwards course design. For many of you, this may be the first time you've heard the term course design. Course design doesn't have anything to do with the way your course looks, other than perhaps in table format, that is. It's not about the visual design or look, as the term design often implies, but rather it's a way a course can be planned out with its major components, which we will get into. I'd like to start by asking you to think about and list what steps you take to plan out a new course. Feel free to pause the video and grab something to write with. Once you are ready, write down at least five or so steps you take to figure out what is going to transpire in your course. Okay, next I would like you to look at your list and consider what would be the first step you would take to plan out a new course. So the typical approach to course design what happens most often is that instructors will first select the content and any activities for the course. The next step is often the creation of some assessments that test students on how well they have learned that content. And finally, often only if they are asked for, instructors will write some learning outcomes for the course that are usually based on what content is covered. So this is the typical method of course design. However, the approach called backwards course design proposes a reversal of this direction. Rather than starting with a bunch of material for students to learn, backwards course design suggests instructors start with the goals of the course. What do we want students to leave our class having learned? And in case the term learning outcome is new to you, it basically means what do you expect your students to know, to do, to demonstrate, or to produce as a result of taking the course. In other words, what will be the outcome of taking your course? So backwards course design suggests we start with the goals of the course. What do we want students to leave our class having learned? Then the next step should be to create assessments. When creating assessments, we should ask ourselves what evidence do we need to see to determine the learning outcomes have been met. And finally, the third step is to select the content and activities for the course. In other words, what content and activities are needed to fulfill the learning outcomes. So the idea is that learning outcomes, those goals for students to achieve, are what should be driving the design of the course, not the content. The approach and term backwards course design has been largely promoted by Grant Wiggins and Jay McTie, and they have a book called Understanding by Design where they outline this approach. Wiggins and McTie argue that, as instructors, we tend to focus a lot on content. What are we going to present students with? They suggest instead we stop and ask ourselves, how do we make it more likely by our design that students really understand what they are asked to learn? In other words, how do we better design our courses so that we facilitate learning? Next, let's take a look at their model of course design. We have these same three components that we saw before. So we start the design of our course by identifying the desired results. In other words, the learning outcomes. Here we should consider our goals for students. What are the department or program's goals for students, usually in the form of learning outcomes and we should consider any curriculum expectations, what is generally expected of students who complete a course of its topic. Next, instructors should determine acceptable evidence. This is essentially the assessment for the course. How Wiggins and McTie frame it is what collected evidence is needed to document or validate desired learning has been achieved. And finally, only after these two steps should we begin planning learning experiences and instruction. In other words, content and activities. 
I also want to take a quick look at a second model of course design, one by L. D. Fink that he calls integrated course design. He too has a book that outlines his approach and he has come up with great activities for instructors for getting the course design process rolling. Fink's model of course design has the same primary components as the Wiggins and McTie model. In fact, the models are very complementary. The Wiggins and McTie model's desired results are the same as Fink's learning goals. Their acceptable evidence is Fink's feedback and assessment. And their learning experience and instruction is Fink's teaching and learning activities. So a lot of alignment and overlap. But do you notice what is different about the two models? Take a moment to see what main difference you can find. So you may have noticed that while the Wiggins and McTie model is arranged to emphasize the sequential order of the elements, Fink's model is arranged in a way that emphasizes the alignment of the elements. So Fink does propose a backwards design order. He does suggest establishing the learning goals first and then establishing the feedback and assessment procedures and then developing teaching and learning activities like Wiggins and McTie do. However, Fink's model emphasizes the importance of ensuring key components are aligned with one another by asking questions such as, do assessment procedures address the full range of learning goals? Are there learning goals not being assessed? Are we assessing something that isn't a learning goal? What about learning activities? Do they support learning goals? For example, do learning activities consist of all lecture when what we really want is for students to be able to critically evaluate? So Fink arranges the elements in a triangle to emphasize the importance of ensuring all three elements are aligned with one another. Fink has a worksheet to help instructors identify components for courses and assess their alignment. It's called a course design alignment grid and we will take a look at it in another part of this lesson.